Welcome to the 805 Focus, where we focus on the events, topics, and people that matter to the South Coast. I'm your host, Dominique Samario. In this episode, we're joined by two special guests to talk about the upcoming Earth Day Festival. Michael Chiakis from the Community Environmental Council and Jeff Timer from New Noise Music Foundation. Thank you for joining us. Thank, Thank you for having us. All right. So Earth Day is a really special festival in Santa Barbara due to all of the history that surrounds it. And, you know, Michael, I know Community Environmental Council has really been here from the beginning. Can you give us a little bit of that history? Yeah, Santa Barbara is a special place because it's uh, widely seen as uh, the birthplace of the modern environmental movement. So what happened was after the big oil spill in 1969, the community was outraged as were people all across the nation. And there's a lot of attention here in Santa Barbara. And my organization, the Community Environmental Council, was formed right after the oil spill. And one of our first actions in 1970 was to have one of the first Earth Day celebrations in the whole country. And now, over 40 years later, we're still doing it. And what do you think has helped with that progression of growth? I mean, what's kept it around for so many years? Well, the most important thing is just that it's Mother Earth and everybody cares. And it's, the festival is a great time for the Santa Barbara community just to come together, really celebrate, learn some new things, and have a lot of fun as well. And now, Jeff, um, New Noise has been a part of it. This will be its fourth year, is that correct? Yeah, it's our fourth year. We were brought on as a production and we book all the musical acts for Earth Day um, about four years ago. And um, New Noise produces concerts throughout the uh, year in Santa Barbara. Uh, we do about 50 bands or so each year. So it's a, we're doing a lot of music. Um, we have a festival in the fall called the New Noise Music Festival. And we have speakers and we have uh, musicians come in from all over the country, talk about the future of music and the industry, and then have uh, fun. And we get to uh, partner with great organizations like Community Environmental Council throughout the year to help them with their music and also uh, just the more production nuts and bolts of the festival. And what, I mean, it's, it's an environmental festival. How does music get thrown into that then? You know, what's kind of that yeah. progression? Well, it's a good question. I mean, as you know, there's a lot of local festivals in Santa Barbara. Avocado Fest is great. Solstice is great. But one of the things with, um, I think, music is it's, a, it's always a part of each of those festivals. And there's a reason. Music, um, I think, uh, evokes passion. Um, a lot of the artists we have at Earth Day share the, uh, the passion for um, environmentalism um, and also community. And so I think music's an essential part, and plus it's just fun. I mean, we got to have, when you're at Earth Day, you're learning all these great things. We're going to talk about like the ride and drive, the, the green car show. But music really sets a vibe, and it lets people kind of enjoy learning um, and, and have a little fun, you know, while they're doing it. And, you know, forever, since the beginning of, um, you know, the environmental movement, for sure, Artists have been a big part of that, I think. And so we try to you know, book artists that have that same vibes, that same message. It's perfect, so it's sort of this natural fit, natural collaboration between the oh, two yeah, of you and guys. Yeah, it's, it's, it's a big festival, 35,000 people come, so there's really a little bit of everything for, for everyone. So 35,000 people, I know it's one of the largest on the West Coast, isn't that correct? Yeah. And what was that progression? I mean, when it first started, what kind of numbers were you seeing? Do you think people, over this history have sort of gotten more involved in the earth-friendly movement or yeah, what do you think? Um, I can speak more for the last six years that I've been working at CEC and working on Earth Day and really um, we moved the, the whole festival to Alameda Park um, and since then we've seen we've really just hit our stride as a festival. We went from being a one-day event to two days so when you have a two-day um, festival you can have a lar larger build bring more infrastructure in and have more people and more things going on. So um, the last few years we've been stable around 35, 38,000 people and we think that this is a really good size, look, feel for the festival. Was the history behind um, the Earth Day Festival here in Santa Barbara, was that one of the reasons that New Noise wanted to be a part of it? Um, no, you know, honestly, New Noise started in 2009 and I, I'm the, I was the founder, and one of the founders, and one of our missions with New Noise was to not only do music, but also education um, and connecting other like-minded people together, basically, in any way. 
Um, so when New Noi is after our first festival, we decided to keep going with it. We didn't know at the time. And I started looking for organizations um, in town that shared our vision and that needed help uh, with exactly what we've kind of done together over the last few years, which is um, really curate like a music experience, but then also um, you know use our kind of industry knowledge to to help grow something and scale um, a community festival to where it is now. And I think that's like kind of the thing that excited me personally about it um, is working with good people and kind of uh, Loa Tree is another uh, organization that does a lot of the marketing and also helps us with the production. So it's like, it's really this family vibe um, that Earth Day as a festival has. And New Noise, I hope, has that vibe too. And so when we come together, it's the uh, one of the best parties Santa Barbara throws each year, I think. <laughs> now, Michael, does it take a lot of groups and organizations from the community to make this happen? Definitely. We have over uh, or, or over 250 ex exhibitors every year, so this is all Santa Barbara groups that are coming out. We have over 300 volunteers, so a lot of people coming together to help put this on. Uh, the Community Environmental Council, um, over our, our 40 years of history, we've worked on a lot of different environmental solutions to different uh, environmental problems. So we've started on everything from recycling. We were very well known for starting the first nonprofit recycling center in the state. And, now recycling is really an everyday activity. Um, over the years, we've worked on organic gardens. Um, we've worked on watershed activities. So in the last eight or so years, we've really focused on fossil fuels and reducing our impact, our use of fossil fuels. And um, Earth Day is a really great opportunity to just come and learn, right? There's over two, 250 uh, different exhibitors. And there's a lot, of, you get to really see, get a, uh, a look into the Santa Barbara community, all the great environmental things that are happening in our community, as well as have a lot of fun. That's perfect. So I want to talk about more of that fun. We've got the history, but I want to hear about this year's festival. So we'll take a quick break, and then uh, we'll be right back with more. The Santa Barbara Earth Day Festival at Alameda Park. Live music, exhibits, a green car show, an Earth-friendly fun for the entire family. Support your community and celebrate our Earth. Save the date for the Community Environmental Council's Earth Day Festival, Saturday, April 20th and Sunday, April 21st at Alameda Park. Welcome back to the 805 Focus. I'm joined by Michael Chakos from Community Environmental Council and Jeff Timer from New Noise Music Foundation. And we're talking about the Earth Day Festival that's coming up in April. Um, we talked a lot about the history, got the past. Let's talk about the current. Tell me the details for this year's festival. All right, well, it's gonna be Saturday, April 20th. And that's from 11 to seven on Saturday. And then Sunday, April 21st, uh, from 11 to 6 and uh, it's at Alameda Park so right downtown Santa Barbara very easy to get to and since it is Earth Day we really encourage people to come car free uh, you can bike take the bus um, walk and because um, parking is really limited you'll probably get there faster actually if you ride your bike uh, one of the really great things is the bike valet so last year over 1500 people biked and um, you can just ride your bike, come into the bike valet area, and you'll, you'll be able to get VIP treatment. Someone will take your bike, keep it safe, you can leave your belongings on there, and it's a really great way to enter the festival. Yeah, I actually, um, the last two years, I've gone to Earth Day on my Good bike, yes. used the bike valet. Nice. It was the most amazing experience. I've never felt so special to be riding my bike somewhere. So, And you're also encouraging them to take the bus. Maybe they don't have a bike or it's a little too far for them. They can take the bus as well, right? Yeah, it's a great way to, you know, if you haven't taken the bus in a while, look up the schedule, take your family on the bus. Um, also, it's a pretty short walk from a lot of areas. You know, all the downtown areas, the east or west side, really can walk there in less than 20, 30 minutes. So again, that'll probably be faster than driving and trying to find a parking spot because there are 35,000 people that are, that are joining us. So yeah, please try to come car free to Earth Day. That makes sense, support the Earth Day, you know, Definitely. That, uh, that meaning behind it. Yes. So now the way that it's set up, it's got these different zones. Can you tell me a little bit about some of the zones that the new noise is a part of, Jeff? Yeah, totally. Um, you know, each year our, our fearless leader, uh, Sigrid Wright, um, who's the associate director of the Community Environmental Council, 
Um, she always, we, we, she really likes to focus on um, getting a really concise message and trying to figure out the best way to lay out a festival because the park is, you know, obviously uh, multifaceted. It has a lot of different things going on and we have a road going right through our festival. So one of the cool things that we've been doing over the last couple of years is developing different zones, like you said. So the main stage is um, a zone that I'm uh, most involved with. And for the main stage, we have not only music, like we talked a little bit about, um, we have over... 14, I think, artists on the main stage this year who are going to be performing, um, mostly local, um, because we do, like I, I said, try to keep it as local as possible. Um, and then we have another, uh, I think, five or six on the harvest stage, which is over in, um, near the food court. But we also have a non-performer, uh, non-amplified entertainment, like we have yoga in the morning, so you can come. Uh, I think Yoga Soup will be doing that on Sunday morning, so you can come and do a yoga session, uh, followed by some meditation. Um, we have some uh, great leaders who are going to be leading people in meditation. Um, and then we have capoeira. We have all this kind of fun, um, non-amplified stuff coming out of the main stage um, to really, again, kind of reinforce that sense of community and do stuff that Santa Barbarans like to do, um, which That's is... Amazing. You know, obviously that encourages a healthy lifestyle, I, I would say, as well. Yeah, what are some other there, there's another um, stage which is actually in the sports and rec area um, that's actually powered by bicycles. So you could go check it out. You could actually ride the bike to help generate the electricity for the PA and everything. So we have a bike-powered stage. And we um, need them. We need them to do We that. need people helping us there. So, yeah, so stop by. So you need all the cyclists in town to, <laughs> to stop that's by. <laughs> I like that. I think one of the, the, the more fun um, things also with, with all the music is that we have an organic uh, wine and beer garden as well. So in the afternoon you can Not have, have a drink. Not all organic beer, but yes. Uh, we do have a great uh, beer garden that um, uh, Pacific Beverage and Firestone um, are our major sponsors. And so they keep the, uh, the beer garden, the beer and wine flowing throughout the uh, weekend. So it's a great place to watch the music too, to have a beer. You know, we have a wonderful kids zone um, on one side of the park where um, you can go and uh, usually have a petting zoo uh, or, or a, you know, interact with some of the animals that, um, that are at Earth Day, uh, llamas, I think we had la alpacas, excuse yes. me. It's a big distinction, alpaca versus llama. Lots of different um, children's activities. Great children's activities. We have a children's stage where we have some music as well. But then, um, you know, it just it's, it's a really cool little... Um, area that has a lot of local uh, organizations that are helping uh, youth learn about the environment and about um, sustainability, really, in general. I mean, you guys have touched on everything from yoga, meditation, listening to bands, a beer and wine garden, to a petting zoo for children. I mean, you're there's, really... There's a lot more, too. And, yeah. and you're, so you're, everybody is welcome and everybody's going to have a good time. At least it sounds like right. to there's me, also, right? There's also the public square. So this is where all the different nonprofit organizations, local governments, uh, elected leaders can come out so you can get to learn about all the different things that are happening in, in the community. And it's amazing. Every year when I walk through, I learn about new things, and I've been going to Earth Day a lot. <laughs> and you can shake your fists at a, at a local official that you just really wanted to, Told you know, them, they, they, they took your away mind. your parking spot. You know? <laughs> but no, but it is really cool, and it's, it's kind of like the idea was born out of um, Trafalgar Square, or, um, or actually, sorry, Speaker's Corner in um, London, uh, where they had to step up on the little soapbox. Um, I believe it's Speaker's Corner, I think, or Speaker's Square. Um, sorry, Brits. Uh, but at the same time, it's the idea of like being able to directly speak to your elected official. Like I, I don't know when the last time I, you know, called Lois, but um, it's been a while since I've talked to Lois Cap. So well, see, see, we do it all the time. Yeah, I know you do, and they're doing that for us, so you guys know. That's true. But um, I don't, and you know, if I have a question about what Lois or, or what our Congress people or, or elected officials or mayor is doing about. Um, anything that's important to the local community, it's a really good opportunity and an easy one um, to, yeah. to take advantage of. So we encourage that. Another great part of the festival, which I'm uh, most heavily involved in, I'm the zone captain actually mm -hmm. for the Green Car Show. Oh. And it's really exciting because uh, in the last couple years we've added a ride and drive. So we have a lot of different hybrids, electric vehicles, clean diesels. Basically, if you're interested in a greener vehicle, you have all of them in one place. So you can Walk through uh, the green car shows. Um, there'll be almost 50 vehicles in it this year. Yeah. And then you can also do a ride and drive, so you can test drive an electric or hybrid car. 
Preferably and before you go to the beer garden. Yeah, and yeah definitely. Yes, um, <laughs> you can have the breathalyzer there. But it's, uh, it is okay. really like one of the highlights. It's one of the biggest screen car shows in the South Coast, right? Uh, on the whole West Coast, actually. On the whole West Coast. Yeah, it's, a, it's really big. Let me toot really his really horn a little bit. Yeah. But because, I mean, it is like, we had the Tesla like right when it came out, the first yeah. Tesla. We've had this the year. Leaf. We'll have the, the Tesla Model S, the, the new Model one. S. Oh, it is. We're really excited. So, about. and you can actually drive it, and it's like pretty killer. We have like a little, you know, it's not a race course, but you know, it's a ten block course. It's a ten block get, course, get, which ain't bad. You get to sit in the vehicle. You get to check it out. And it, what's really amazing is these new electric vehicles. They get a hundred miles per gallon equivalent. Yeah, it's crazy. Zero tailpipe emissions, and on. The California electri electricity grid, when you plug them in, you reduce your uh, carbon by 75%. So, wow. very good choice. And yeah. you'll get to see them all at the Green Car Show. Okay, that sounds really neat. I mean, you're, now you're even appealing to the, you know, the auto junkies out yeah, there. So, you're people, really getting techies. everybody. We'll, we'll also right. have a solar carport. So, you'll be able to see with an electric vehicle and solar, you could be driving on sunshine instead of oil. I think, I think you hit on a good point. I think one of the things that Earth Day, since we've come on for sure, is one of the goals, and I, I love this about the CEC and, and Earth Day, is that it, it's not, we're not just for hippies. You know what I mean? It's not what your, your grandma's Earth Day. You know, we're like, we're trying to be inclusive and really trying to show people practical ways that you can change your life in, you know, small ways that really do have a cumulative difference, you know, a, a cumulative difference, excuse me. They can really, and I, and I think there's, you get to meet all these organizations like the CEC, but the CEC is not the only one who are doing really cool things in, the, in our community that you can take part in, you can volunteer for, you can uh, you know, um, eat locally even. So it's like you really get to learn a lot about um, other organizations too that are doing cool work. I think that's really important. The last thing that I wanna talk about in terms of this year's festival is a special award that you guys give out annually. Um, and there are two recipients this year of the Environmental Hero Award. Tell me what the, kind of the, what's the meaning behind that award and why do you want to honor somebody at this festival? So what we want to do with the Environmental Hero Award is to just honor someone who's made a great contribution to the environment. So actually this year we're honoring uh, two different people. Van Jones, who is very well known clean energy advocate, advocate um, social justice uh, advocate, and also Bill Nye, the science guy. And everybody knows Bill Nye. I so. love that. When and I Van read Jones, that, I thought, yes. You didn't even drop, you, you, he's a bad name dropper. Van Jones was in Obama's in, administration um, and, and did a uh, huge program um, to, yeah, encourage, and to encourage, encourage green jobs. So it's a, it's a big deal. He came and spoke at the Libero, I believe, a couple months ago. Um, but he's, I mean, one of a great speaker. And, you know, obviously the CEC believes that He's uh, worthy of the of the title environmental hero because, you know, we, we do want to affect change, and I think these are the people who have some power. Yeah, we try so. to bring someone inspiring that people generally know has some name recognition, so that people want to come out and um, see the award ceremony and see what the, what the environmental hero has to say. Who else? We we had uh, Elon Musk who did found uh, Tesla Motors one year. And SpaceX. SpaceX. Yeah, very interesting. Uh, very inspiring uh, young man. Yeah. yeah. We've had uh, Daryl Hannah in the past, James Cameron. So those Avatar. are the last few. Wow. I mean, you know, and who knows who's going to show up this year, right? Right. Got to come. I mean, they want to come too, right? To experience this excitement. I'm definitely enticed to attend. You but, can ride your bike. And I'm going to ride my bike yes. because I I do cycle. Um, but I also, you know, I want to start implementing these things now. It's April, it's Earth Day, it's in the news, and I want to start making changes. So we're going to take a quick break, and when we come back, I want to chat with you guys about what you're doing and some ideas for the viewers at home of how we can make a difference, okay? Great. We'll be right back. The Santa Barbara Earth Day Festival at Alameda Park. Live music, exhibits, a green car show, and Earth-friendly fun for the entire family. Support your community and celebrate our Earth. Save the date for the Community Environmental Council's Earth Day Festival, Saturday, April 20th and Sunday, April 21st at Alameda Park. Welcome back to the 805 Focus, where we're talking about the upcoming Earth Day Festival. So guys, we've got plenty of information about the history. We're all revved to go to this year's festival. But I want some tips to start implementing now. I'm so inspired. So 
share share a tip with me that that you use at home or in your everyday life that you know maybe the viewers can start. Yeah, well, I'm the transportation guy at CEC, so that's probably what I'll start. And really, transportation is usually the biggest environmental choice you'll make each day. You know, like um, bringing your plastic bags uh, or reducing your plastic bag use and bringing your own bags to the grocery store is important, but the transportation that you do is way bigger than that. So I bike to work every day. I think that's a really great way to start. And then also my girlfriend and I, we've, um, we share an electric car. So we have an electric car, gets around 100 miles per gallon equivalent, zero tailpipe emissions. Um, and then also we recently went solar on our house and so now we're driving on sunshine, which is really cool. Wow, I love that. What about you, Jeff? Is there anything that you do? Or There's you... no way I can beat Michael, okay? But you, so know you guys what? Actually, know. I'm no, no, no. a professional no. He's a professional. <laughs> no, and that's why Jeff actually... It's not fair. I'm not a crook. <laughs> We're not uh, using you as the contrast, but you know what? Yeah. Not everybody is going no, to bike everywhere, good. although we'd love it. And not everybody's going to go solar, but yeah. what about some small... I mean, they do no, all I, add up, right? I know. that. I think they totally do. And I think, obviously, where you live matters, right? So if I live downtown, I think... Walking, like like Michael said, it takes 20 extra minutes, but it's it's a big deal, and it, and it can affect um, your change. I think one of the things that um, I like to do is encourage uh, local business and local shops and farmers market. Um, yesterday, it's it's always fun to go out and walk farmers market and actually get your food for the week there. My wife just went vegan. Um, so I'm really in for it. <laughs> and uh, Steph, I love you. Um, and she, and you no, know, she's been a big part of uh, New Noise as well. But she also um, forces us to uh, shop local, eat local, um, which I really think is a big deal for, for me personally. Um, and then, you know, uh, I, I think being conscious of your choices that you're making throughout the day um, is a big deal. And I, I think I'll wrap it up there because I'm not, you know, he, he's way bigger hippie than Going I am. Going vegan is a big deal. Yeah, I know. Trust me, I know. I'm working on it. <laughs> he's feeling it. Right I'm not now. working on it. <laughs> no, that's great for her. Congratulations. Yeah, thank you. you definitely know. encourage her. So now you work at, as we discussed, Community Environmental Council. Yes. I'm assuming you've got some great tips brewing, even if you don't implement them all in your everyday life, but just being surrounded in that office environment. What are some of the you know, more recent things that people there are saying, hey, this is something that, that people can do? people should do. Right. Well, uh, Jeff t really touched on food, and that's a, that's a really big one. So eating less meat, maybe you don't have to go all the way <laughs> vegan, although I, I have a lot of admiration for people who do. Yeah. So yeah, eating higher quality uh, meat, but less of it, going to the farmer's market, supporting um, organic agriculture and uh, uh, the, the local foods is, is really important. Um, cutting out plastic. CEC, we work a lot on cutting out plastic in, in our life. I mean, we live right here by this beautiful ocean, so being able to reduce your use of plastic bags, water bottles, all those things are, is, is also another good step that's really easy to do once you get used to it. Totally, um, and I, I think the technology also helps, and I know Michael's been working on some different projects at the CEC um, for ride sharing, um, for, um, and even just tracking your own life, right? I mean, technology is, uh, you know, not only Google, but you have an iPhone that we live our lives through sometimes now. Um, and there's a lot of great information on um, where to shop, where to um, get an electric car, or, you know, find out information. I think that's the biggest thing. And Yeah, CEC's website has a ton of information, yeah. um, cecsb.org. And uh, it's a great resource for the community. And um, there's a lot of great personal stories there, too, um, which is really fun to go. You can read our blog or subscribe to our blog. And you'll see you know, a community member who is cutting plastic out of their life or is uh, biking, you know, made a commitment to bike. And you get to read through the story and, and, and kind of see the things that they thought about, the challenges they had. And, and it's a really fun way to learn. And I think the one thing, and then I'll leave it at this because I know I ramble. Um, the one thing is, uh, one thing that I think we can encourage is write your, your congressperson or your city council and like, you know, let's ban plastic bags in Santa Barbara. I mean, I think that you mentioned it, it just, it makes sense, you know, to, to have um, or pay a tax on or a fee for that. I think that is um, a one thing that we can do immediately is just talk to your uh, local authorities about what you believe in and that can affect change. You know something that I uh, read about on the Earth Days website and talk about a small thing that you can do to make a big difference is um, bringing your sneakers 
right? Yeah, Dropping yeah. off your old sneakers. Just tell the viewers about that because I thought what a small thing that they can do that could really add up. And that's through the um, the greensneakers.org, right? Mm -hmm. And they just yeah. so drop we, off an gonna, old pair? Yeah, we're going to have these boxes basically. And Warner from Plus One um, Event Management kind of set this up and it's really cool. He's not going to get my Chuck Taylors. But <laughs> if you have, have old sneakers, you can bring them in and while these big boxes and the, and the CEC actually will benefit um, for, uh, per pound. I, I don't know what the, the donation is, but each pound is um, creating a donation for the Community Environmental Council and for the sneaker organization. And then they'll take the sneakers and um, they'll be reused and get, and, uh, for yeah. people in need. Yeah, so it's, it's really cool and I, and I encourage you to uh, you know, throw, throw your sneakers on your shoulder on the way, uh, when you're biking to Earth Day. That's right, what an easy way to really you know, yeah. spread that impact, win-win situation. Give me one last thing that you think viewers should know about the upcoming festival. Well, definitely our website, sbearthday.org. All the information's there, all the things that we talked about. Um, there's great photos, um, different profiles, highlights, so check out sbearthday.org. Yeah, and Oniracom um, is doing some great uh, live streaming we'll have, or a uh, live event. So when you're at the event, you'll be able to really keep track of what's going on around you through Twitter. Um, they have a great like social feed, it's called, that will be throughout the park. But I think the other things that I'd like to hit is we have a great opening night party, um, April 17th. Uh, it's a Wednesday before Earth Day. Um, and it's, a, it's really fun. It's at Oriana Winery uh, this year. And we'll have music. You can meet all the people like Michael who work at the Community Environmental Council um, and really get kind of, we use it as a, a community gathering kind of and get everyone excited about not sleeping for four days um, and, and prepping it. And uh, I think that's a real big deal. And that's, you can find that at sbearthday.org as well. Um, and then I think, uh, you know, the last point I think I'd want to make is Earth Day is, like you said, about collaborators. It's about Loa Tree, um, who help with marketing and event production. It's about the CEC. It's about new noise. It's about plus one event management. But it's also about um, the community. And we have over 300 volunteers each year. They come and donate their time from and different local help. companies. And we do need help. So if you, uh, if you go to sbearthday.org, you can sign up to be a volunteer, and we have different stuff to do. We have everything from counting people, so we have accurate numbers. 35,000. <clears throat> yeah, and uh, Michael pays you if you count two, no, uh, <laughs> for one. Um, no, but uh, no, we have, we have uh, counters, we have uh, production set up, we have beer garden pours, we have um, help with the stage, help with cleanup. Um, and so there's a lot of different things you can do, and it's really fun. And we have uh, we even give you like food every once in a while. Um, You're part of something awesome. big, and it does. It, it's the best vibe. I mean, like I said, for New Noise, this is our my favorite event to work each year. And um, as a volunteer, you get to kind of experience that. And so if you want to do that, you know, that is please do. The perfect, you know, message to send out. Let them be a part of it as well. So with that, I'd really like to thank both Michael and Jeff from Community Environmental Council and then also from the New Noise Music Foundation. Um, if you'd like to attend the festival, again, it's Saturday, April 20th and Sunday, April 21st at Alameda Park right in downtown Santa Barbara. You can always visit the website at svearthday.org and to rewatch this show and look at all of our other programming for TVSB culture, you can visit our website at tvsb.tv. I'm your host, Dominique Samario, and thank you for joining us for the 805 Focus, where we focus on the events, topics, and people that matter in the 805.